like judgments and decrees or being judgmental. So I want you to picture in your mind this very strong man, okay? And this guy says, you know, I can really trust my gut. That's like his his uh, tagline. I have a good I have good instincts. I can really trust my gut. And so one day he's walking along and he sees in this parking lot a man kicking another guy. He's just got this guy on the ground. He's just kicking him. And the big strong guy goes over. What's going on here? Why are, you, why are you kicking this guy? Big strong guy wants to be a hero. And the guy who's doing the kicking says, I'm kicking this guy because this guy hit me. And the big strong man looked down. And he saw that the guy on the ground was a little bit bigger. And so he joined in. And he starts kicking the guy on the ground. He says, you think you can just hit people? Hitting people is wrong. What's wrong with you? And the guy on the ground is getting kicked. And he says, no, I hit that guy because he was trying to kill me. Now the big, strong guy stops, looks at the guy next to him, says, you tried to kill him? And the guy next to him is like, well, yeah, but but that, the big man throws the guy next to him on the ground. He starts kicking him. You think you can just have me kicking somebody and you're over here trying to kill them? Killing people is wrong. Don't you know that? And the guy on the ground gets up and he joins in. He starts kicking this this other guy. So now the two of them are kicking this guy on the ground. The guy on the ground says, yeah, but it was because the guy kidnapped my sister. And then the big strong man stops, says, looks at the guy next to him. You tried to kidnap his sister? <laughs> Before the guy can even respond, he's got that guy on the ground. Now he's kicking him. And the guy on the ground gets the other guy for that was getting kicked before gets up. And now the two of them are kicking this guy on the ground who apparently kidnapped the sister. And then that guy says, it's not a kidnapping when you're married to them. I was taking her on a honeymoon. Here, there's a license in my pocket. Big strong man wants to investigate. I'm not getting fooled this time. Goes in the man's pocket, pulls it out. Sure enough, there is a marriage license. This guy married his sister. He didn't kidnap her. So this guy takes this guy next to him. You told me that she was kidnapped, throws him on the ground and starts kicking this guy now again. And the guy who was on the ground and married the sister who stands up and he gets, he joins in on kicking this guy who's on the ground. And the guy who was on the ground says, yeah, but she was only 17. And now the big guy's like, what? You married a 17 year old? Why you predator? And pulls that guy back down and starts kicking him again. And guess what? <laughs> the guy on the ground now that's getting kicked says, yeah, but that was 10 years ago. Look at the date on the marriage license. <laughs> so now the big guy looks at the marriage license. Ah, that was 10 years ago. And he says, yeah, and I was 17 too. And says, oh, now the, the, the strong man is just confused. He doesn't know who he should be beating up, who he should be kicking. And it feels like he judged all the situation a little bit too soon. So probably he should have just saw these guys and either kept walking or called the authorities to help. Instead, he thought he was getting involved. He thought he he understood. He trusted his gut. And that backfired on him. So a wise man recognizes how much they do not know. There is so much I don't know. When we talk about trust in the gut, talking about prejudice, intuition is prejudice. It's making a decision on something or forming an opinion on something before you have all the facts. That is the definition of both intuition and prejudice. Now, don't get me wrong. Prejudice is not always bad. Okay, so there's going to be some survival situations where we need to judge something, snap, spur of the moment and figure it out. And we don't have time to get all the facts. Like if you see a, a big scary guy following you in an alley, now you got to just fight, flight, freeze. You got to do something to get yourself safe. You don't have time in that situation to get all the facts. So so sometimes prejudice is actually a good thing. It can keep us safe. It's not always bad to be prejudiced. Uh, and our intuition, the same way. The, the thing is, we don't want to guide our life by prejudice 
or intuition. That is to prejudge situations without having all of the facts. And so I'd like to take this a step further and to help you to, to get out of trauma mindset and recognize that in general, being judgmental is maladaptive. Being judgmental is maladaptive. Now, if you were to be honest with yourself, you might notice that you're a little bit of a judgmental person. Do you notice that about yourself? That you're a little bit judgmental? So that's where you, you tend to look at someone and make a decision or an opinion on them based on what you know about the person as to whether they're good or bad, whether they're worthy in a general sense. Are they a worthless person? Right. And that's what a, a judgmental person is someone who's making determinations on whether someone's worthwhile or not. But is that really what we as humans are best designed for? Are we supposed to be the judge of others? Well, the answer is no. Humans are not gods. We are kings and queens, but we're not gods. So we are not equipped to be able to properly judge other people. What are we lacking? We don't have the ability to read people's hearts. We don't have the ability to read their intentions. We don't have the ability to hear their thoughts. So therefore, we are actually not capable to judge perfectly or righteously. So why are trauma survivors so judgmental? Well, hypervigilance causes a trauma survivor to constantly be on alert. And so they're using their judgmentalness as a defense mechanism. And so they're in a heightened state of alertness and they figure if they can just judge or assess situations quickly, they can protect themselves from perceived threats. They're afraid. They don't want to get hurt again. Trauma survivors struggle with control. And so they're trying to control things that they're not supposed to be controlling. And then they let things go that they are supposed to be controlling. So to cope with their traumatic past, they may attempt to regain some type of control over their lives. And by making judgments and arbitrary decrees, then they feel like that gives them a sense of control, even if it's an illusion. It makes them feel safer, more secure. Trauma survivors have difficulty trusting others. And so because someone has hurt them or many people have hurt them, they say, well, I don't trust anyone. Or they may take a whole group of people. Like, I don't trust any men, or I don't trust any women, or I don't trust any tall people, right? And then they take a trait, and they say that anybody who has this trait, I don't trust anybody of that trait, or from that country, right? But they're traumatized, and they're trying to figure out, how do I prevent this from happening to me again? But instead of fully processing, using uh, their their processing powers of discernment, they have now made an arbitrary judgment against all of a certain type of people trying to keep themselves safe. Also, trauma survivors struggle with boundaries. So if you didn't have parents that helped you to learn how to set good boundaries and what you are the authority of, now you're struggling to really realize where your authority is. So you're setting big boundaries that are not reasonable, healthy boundaries because you're trying to keep yourself safe. So this is where, again, we go to, I don't trust any humans. I don't like any humans. And then we only trust animals now, which even animals can't be trusted at all times, right? So these big boundaries don't really keep us safe. They just limit us. Because once we decide that we're going to cast off all people, now we can't have relationships. And if you can't have relationships, then that's going to limit you greatly in your life because everything really comes through relationships, doesn't it? Anything you buy, sell, do, any advancement you make, it's all going to come through relationships. And your relationship skills, therefore, are a life skill. They will determine your quality of life. So once you limit yourself in your ability to have relationships, you diminish your quality of life. Also, those big feelings, emotional dysregulation is another reason why it's just easier for us to make arbitrary judgments 
so that we can attempt to control situations so we don't have those big overwhelming emotions because we're afraid that we can't regulate ourselves. So so when we analyze our reasons for being judgmental, it's understandable, but it is no longer excusable. Does that make sense? We can understand why we might have gotten into a habit of being judgmental or making arbitrary decrees, but it is mental illness. Mental illness is believing something that is untrue and believing that you can judge people is untrue, that you can read their hearts, their minds. It's untrue. You you are not God. You don't have those capabilities. You weren't endowed with those particular gifts. We have a lot of gifts as humans, and our intuition is a gift, meaning our prejudice is a gift, but it needs to be used properly, right? Just like your smoke detector in your house is used to to let you know if there could be a potential fire because it's detecting the smoke, but you need to use it properly. You don't use the smoke detector for every issue in the house. Oh, I wonder if it's dirty. No, the smoke alarm's not going off. Oh, oh, I wonder if it's too cold in here. Oh, the smoke alarm's not going off. That doesn't make sense, right? Likewise, we don't use the intuition or the prejudice for everyday life situations. We use them for immediate survival-based situations. That's when you need your intuition, your prejudice. Everyday life situations is not when we should rely on prejudice. Does that make sense? So for everyday life situations, dealing with your boss, dealing with your spouse, dealing with your mom, cousin, brothers, uncle, aunts, neighbors, what do we need to rely on? If not judgment, then what? Well, I introduce to you discernment. This is a gift that you have. You have the gift of discernment. Discernment is a divine gift that you have to implore wisdom. Discernment is different from judging. In fact, uh, the definition of discernment is to perceive in the absence of judgment. To perceive in the absence of judgment. Here's how I want you to differentiate this so that you can learn how to use this gift. Discernment is learning to perceive something as being worthy or acceptable uh, to have access to your resources. Discernment is judging if someone is appropriate or acceptable for you to have access, for them to have access to your resources. Does that make sense? Discernment is judging if a person is worthy of your resources to have access to you. Judgment is discerning if a person is just worthy in a general sense. Or does judging is discerning if a person is worthy of something that's not under your authority. Now you're just being judgmental. Does that make sense? So if you haven't been appointed the judge of someone, but you're determining they're guilty, they're a liar, that's just judgmental because that has nothing to do with your resources. But when you look at a person and you say, I don't feel like I can trust them to have access to my house, my car, my garage code, that's discernment. To look at a man and say, he is vile, he's wicked, he's worthless, that's judgmental. To look at a man and say, I don't think he's good marriage material for me. That's discernment. Do you see the difference? With discernment, we're ascertaining someone's worthiness to have access to our resources. That keeps us safe. Discernment is a gift. Discernment is a gift. Judgment is you stealing something that belongs to someone else because it's not for you to judge, literally. It is not your job. So you're literally doing someone else's job. You cannot read hearts. You cannot read minds. You cannot read intentions. You are not a God. Therefore, you're not supposed to be judging. You're not supposed to be sitting in the seat of judgment. Get out of it. It's you're 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 in the wrong place. Over here with 
wise discernment, we are assessing matters, assessing people in terms of, are they going to have access to our resources? We are the king or the queen of our little kingdom. What are your resources? Do you know? If you've taken the boundaries course and you've learned what your resources are, I have boundary school available on your dashboard in the ADAPT program, or it's available in the TikTok series. So what are your resources? What are you supposed to be the king or the queen of? Here it comes for your notes, your time, your energy, your personal space, your body, your beauty, your talents, your skills, your helpfulness, your encouragement, your support, your money, your house, your cars, any material assets that you have, your children, and your animals. Those are your resources. Did you catch those? Other people do not have a right to your resources. They have to go through you, the king or the queen. And so as the queen, now you must discern who shall have access to my time, energy, talent, skills, personal space, body, beauty, talents. You decide who gets access to that. When you get that, you get mental health. When you get that, you get boundaries. When you get that, you can develop good relationship skills because all relationships are transactional. They are an exchange of resources. And so you have to recognize what it is you're supposed to be judging and discerning around. It's not up to you to decide who's wicked, who's vile, who's good, who's amazing, who's, oh, they're so great. Too much. You can't judge people. You don't know what they are. You don't know what any anyone is. No one, not even your spouse. You don't know anyone. You don't know anything. This is healthy thinking. I know nothing. When you recognize, because you can't read their heart. You can't read their mind. Even if you're married to them. Even if they're your children. You don't know everything about them. Because even what you think you know can change. That's why we can't judge people. We just don't know. So we keep ourselves safe. By understanding what our resources are and understanding it's our job to protect our resources, not to figure out who's good, who's bad. No, no, no. Just to protect your resources. So now you're looking at the person, not from the standpoint of, I got to figure out if they're safe or if they're unsafe. No, you don't. You need to discern if it would be appropriate to give them access to your resources. That's what you're trying to figure out. Well, I want to know by looking at someone if they're a narcissist. You can't. Not in all cases. Of course, sometimes it's more obvious than others. But not in all cases. Remember, these predators are hiding who they are. So we don't know who they are. So how do we keep ourselves safe? By protecting our resources. So you keep your eyes on your bag. Keep your eyes on your bag. That's your resources. And then you're just discerning if you will give access to, to, to these people around you, if you will give access, how much access you'll give. That's your job. And when you focus on that, then you don't fall into being judgmental. You fall into healthy discernment. Mm, I think I think based on the things I've seen, based on the past, based on what I'm sensing with them, based on the way they talk, based on whatever it is, I won't give them access to my resources. That's your decision. I won't let them have access to my children, to my garage code, to my bank account. I won't go spend time with them. I won't let them in my personal space. I won't let them live with me. I won't let them stay with me. I won't give them access to my uh, debit card. I won't let them use my bus pass. That is your stuff. So that's what you're supposed to be discerning. Not judging, discerning. Do you see the difference? Discernment is perception without judgment. So we haven't decided if this person's good, bad, worthy in a general sense. We're just discerning if they are appropriate or worthy of access to our resources in a very specific sense. Often when we think about being judgmental, the problem is we're comparing ourselves to others. That needs to stop. 
judgmental people are looking at life in a hierarchy and they're like, me, me, I'm on top. I'm up here. That's going to rob you of your peace and your happiness. Don't compare yourself to others. Don't compare yourself. It's not our job to judge. We don't have the right to judge as mere humans. Being judgmental and making emotion or making decrees is uh, one of the cognitive distortions that I've identified on our cognitive distortions chart. And so over the next several weeks on Mindset Monday, we're going to be going through one by one and dissecting each of these distortions as a part of a series called Healing the Mind. So under the category of being judgmental is blaming, which is a cognitive distortion. Blaming is a cognitive distortion where we think we know who's responsible and we point the finger. Along those lines, there's self-blame. So that's thinking that you are responsible or to blame for things that are really not totally in your control. Does that make sense? So blaming is cognitive distortion. It's mental illness. We got to root it out. Uh, thinking that you're deserving of punishment or someone else is deserving of punishment. Again, this is judgmental. It's not your job to decide, oh, they need to be punished. They're not getting away with this. It's not your job. You're not all powerful. You can't read the heart. You can't read the you can't read the mind. So, so you can't walk around trying to decide who's going to get punished. It's not your job. You focus on your back, your resources. Uh, deciding that you need to continue to feel guilty or uh, face retribution beyond what's healthy. Now you're going outside of your natural bounds is now becoming judgmental. You're overly judging the self. So we have our natural system of guilt that's aligned with our values. It kicks in naturally and automatically. When you do something that violates your own values, you will feel guilt. The cortisol will drop into the bloodstream and you will suffer. That is sufficient. You don't need to just keep yourself. No, I can't let this go. I am so wrong for what I've done. I must continue to suffer. You're taking it too far. It's mental illness. It's cognitive distortion. It's cognitive distortion. Healthy guilt is acceptable. Shame, toxic shame is I am wrong. That's judgment. It's unacceptable. Healthy guilt is what I did was wrong. What I did was not worthy of the person I want to be. Not, I'm not worthy. That's toxic shame. It's unacceptable. It's a judgment. And it's cognitive distortion, so we have to root it out. Expecting good for the good that you give, cognitive distortion. Sorry. A lot of us fall into this. We do good. We help people. You give, give, give to your partner. I was there for him at this time. I was there for her at that time. And then what happens? They leave you. They abandon you. They abuse you. They call you out. They call the police on you. They do crazy stuff to you. And you're like, what? <laughs> Why did they rob me? Why did they steal from me? And now you look like that person who took the snake off the ground and took the snake in the house and coddled the snake, but the snake still bit you. And you go, why did you bite me? I did all this stuff for you. And the snake's like, because I'm a snake. So the reality of life is that you can do good and get bit. That's the reality of life. Not always, but you can do good and get bit. So when you think that if I do good, good will come back to me, you are in cognitive distortion. Sorry. The good doesn't come back to you in this lifetime and on this planet, in, in this universe. That's not how this universe is working right now. This universe is in a disarray right now. So it's disorderly right now. So sometimes good people are suffering. Sometimes good people are, are facing adverse circumstances. Sometimes bad people are doing bad stuff are prospering. They're doing great, wealthy, and they, they live in some relative sense of peace. That's the topsy-turvy reality of the universe. When we understand that that's what this universe is, 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 is how this world is working right now, then we can come out of the delusion so we don't just keep falling for the same trap. Oh, let me do more good. Then it will come back. No, it's not. It may not always come back. So if we do good, 
We do it out of love, not expecting anything in return. And we're not surprised to see that a snake will be a snake. I feel so, therefore, it must be true. This is cognitive distortion. Feelings are facts. Feelings are not facts. It's a fact that you have a feeling, but the feeling itself isn't a fact. So like, oh, I feel like my spouse is cheating on me. That doesn't mean they are. I feel like my son is doing drugs doesn't mean he is. Just taking negative uh, judgments and predictions on life. Yeah, you're going to be right 60% of the time, but it's not because you have special powers. It's just because we live in a topsy-turvy world with a lot of wickedness. So, so it's mental illness. It's cognitive distortion to see the world as if I feel it, then it must be real. No, no. Our feelings are based on our personal perceptions. That's where our feelings come from. They're based on our subconscious perceptions. That's all. It's not deeper than that. So, so what's the cure for these cognitive distortions? What's the cure for uh, being judgmental? Well, we have to recognize the limits of our authority and the limits of what we control. Because you do have authority, but your authority is just over your resources. And you can control some things, but mostly you control your own actions. There's a man and woman, they lived in the neighborhood for a long time, and they had a big picture window, and they could see their neighbor's house, and this new couple moved in uh, right next door, and the wife would look at the woman next door hanging her laundry. It was so weird because her laundry looked dirty, and the wife would say to her husband, you know, their laundry looks kind of dirty, and the next day she would she would see the same thing, the woman's hanging her laundry. The laundry looked dingy. It was dirty. She said to her husband, her laundry doesn't look very clean. I don't know if she knows what she's doing. And then the next day she's hanging her laundry and the wife says, you know, that laundry that she hangs is not clean. This woman over there is hanging dirty laundry. But the next morning, when this wife went to the picture window, she saw the woman across the street hanging laundry. But this time, the laundry was sparkling clean. And she said to her husband, well, it looks like she finally learned how to clean her laundry. And the husband said, no, actually, I just cleaned the window yesterday. The woman thought that she understood what was going on, but she was looking through a dirty window. And this is what can happen when we're judging others. We think we see things the way they really are, but really it's our window that needs to be cleaned. As humans, admittedly, we can project sometimes. We can project. Like this one kid, he was in school. He said to the teacher, he had a he was in the South, he had a Southern, he said to the teacher, teacher, there's something that just stinks. It's rank in here. And the teacher's like, you know, sit down, please don't make an interruption. The kid got back up, said, something, somebody over here is stinking, teacher. And you know what he realized? It was the pomade he had put in his hair that morning. It was like rancid. It smelled horrible. He was the one who stunk, but he thought it had to be someone else. Don't fall into that trap. Like Jesus said, don't judge the person with the straw in their eye when you have a rafter in your own eye. Don't fall into that trap. We can do that by not being judgmental. Let's just not judge. Let's not assume that we understand, that we know, because sometimes our window is dirty. So let's cure this right now by doing a meditation. And if you meditate on a regular basis, you can heal yourself from being a judgmental person. You can become more discerning. If you meditate, you can become more discerning. So let's do a meditation together. If you want to close your eyes, you can just kind of relax for a moment. And so what I want you to focus on is a principle that I learned as a child from reading the Bible. It is, uh, you will be judged as you judge others. And as you forgive others, that's how you'll be forgiven. So I want you to think about that for a moment. Just meditate on it. You'll be judged as you judge others. 
So now what does that mean for you? For instance, if you want to not be judged harshly, then how should you judge others? If you want to not be judged harshly, then how should you judge others? Think about it. Does it come to your mind that you could avoid being judged harshly if you don't judge others harshly? If you don't judge, then maybe you won't be judged. And when we think about someone like God judging us, he knows everything, right? So now if we don't put that type of judgment on others, then maybe we'll receive mercy as well. If we're forgiving of others, maybe we'll receive forgiveness as well. Now, just picture yourself doing that. Picture yourself talking to people, looking at them. But this time, what you're thinking in your head is not, I'm judging them, they're horrible. But instead, you're just observing with no judgment. Makes it easier to have compassion, doesn't it? Nice job on that meditation. It's good to reflect uh, on the benefits of being non-judgmental. People who are non-judgmental experience better friendships. People who are non-judgmental open themselves up for new experiences and they learn better because you can't learn when you're prejudiced. Your, it shuts your brain down. You think you know, so you can't learn. People who are non-judgmental have deeper spirituality. People who are non-judgmental are happier. People who are non-judgmental have less anger. And it makes it easier to cope with injustice. When people are non-judgmental, it makes it easier to cope with injustice. Listen, injustice is going to be an inevitability. Injustice is going to be an inevitability. You are going to face unfair circumstances. When you recognize that it's not your job to judge and that unfair things can happen in this life, it makes it easier. You're prepared to handle and cope with the injustice that you will inevitably face in this life. So take this peace that you feel right now and expand on it by meditating each day, by recognizing the world as it really is, and making it your determination to be discerning, but to remain non-judgmental.